What's up, guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Glen Farkless 105. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at Glen Farkless today. This one is the 105. Uh, this one is a bit of a legend among sherry lovers. It's an OG sherry bomb. Uh, and it's probably their most popular release, but I don't know the numbers there. Uh, and there's actually a bunch of other 105 releases out there that kind of branched off from this one. But we're just going to be looking at the original today, which first came out in 1968. The name 105 comes from the British proofing system, which works out to 60% ABV. And this one always comes in at precisely 60%. And the thing is, it's cast strength, so presumably they're not adding any water there, which means they have to mix their casks just so. To get a consistent ABV there, and I would imagine that's pretty hard to do. So because of that constraint, they can't just mix together any casks they want and then dilute it down to 60% with water. It's got to be undiluted, so the final product of combining the casks has to work out to 60%, which, again, it's got to be very hard to do. I would imagine that would make it very hard to achieve consistency of flavor. And we are going to touch on batches later. That'll be a big part of this review. In the meantime, um, this stuff is rumored to be both bourbon and sherry matured, so we should have some bourbon in here as well. And it's probably in the ballpark of about eight to 10 years old, although officially it is no age dated, so we can't be sure. Now I've actually got a long history with the 105. This and the Aberlar Abana used to be my go-to sherry bombs back in the day. I'd buy the Abana when I wanted to treat myself. It was more expensive, but I liked it more. I thought it was a better whiskey. But if I was on a tighter budget and I wanted better bang for buck, I'd go for this one. Uh, but the thing is, nowadays, the Avalar Abana is even more expensive than it was back then. And this has remained about the same price. And the thing with the Abana is the quality has gone down. Uh, so a lot of people these days are saying they now prefer this one. Anyway, yeah, as I said, I've had a bunch of this over the years, be it my own bottles or shared bottles or samples or whatever. Um, my friends and I used to peel through it. You know, it's affordable. It's a big one liter bottle with that ABV. Of course, it's going to be loaded with flavor. It's big sherry. So it could be a fun one. Let's jump into the review, see what the whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Of course, we've got a nice big ABV here. This one is cast strength, comes in at 60%. So not kidding around, this will put some hair on your chest. It is non-shell filtered. With regards to color, there's no mention of it on the label that is naturally colored, but I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that it is a natural color. Uh, if you guys know any differently, feel free to let me know down in the comments. So you guys can check out the color there. As for the bottle, I am not a fan of this bottle. I'm getting like supermarket vibes from it. It looks very budget and fair play to it. I mean, it is an affordable whiskey, but just, I don't know. I don't like the look. I feel like there's not much to it. A little bit boring, no style, no pop. I'll give this one two out of five. It does say that it's non-chill filtered on the back. Beyond that, we do not have a lot of information on this bottle. Of course, it's no age stated, but we don't have uh, the barrels or any details or any tasting notes here. It's very bare bones. Uh, it does tell us that it's assertive, amazingly smooth for the strength and wonderfully warming. So there's that. I did add water. Let's try our nose big. Um, we're getting lots of sherry in here, uh, but it's a Glen Farkless sherry, so it doesn't go too sweet. Nutty, uh, praline, sweet almonds maybe. Uh, there's a metallic note to this. There's also charcoal, there's moldy fruits, there's strawberries and cream, and there's loads of apple cider vinegar. Uh, and there's alcohol in here. It's definitely got some heat to it. In fact, this just vaporized all of my nose hairs. I'm going to add more water before the palate. Now the palate. Ooh. Big. Heat. Uh, again, that nuttiness. But it's like burnt nuts. And I don't mean like roasted or toasted nuts. I mean burnt nuts, like like charred nuts. We've got raisins, we've got sultanas, we've got fruitcake, uh, and moldy fruits. Not fermented fruits, I mean moldy fruits. Um, there's also like faint caramel in here. 
definitely some heat, definitely some spice. We have like hot pepper in here. And now our finish. All right, um, the finish is definitely this whiskey's saving grace. By far the best part of the experience. We have some nice red fruits in here. Definitely some raisins, sultanas again. Um, fruit cake, cinnamon, spice, coffee, just classic sherry flavors. And again, it doesn't go too sweet. It's very dry, it's very long. It's a nice finish, although it does go a little bit metallic. Yeah, so this is as big and as brash as I remember it being. It definitely delivers on being a bomb. That being said, it's not quite as heavily sherried as some of the older batches were back in the day. Um, I mean, it's still very sherry forward, but it's not quite as dark either in color or in flavor as some of those older ones, if that matters to you. I suppose the elephant in the room and the problem that most people have with this whiskey is the batch issue. And you know, of course, all whiskey is fundamentally a batch product, but some are much more consistent than others. And something like this is about as consistent as my girlfriend's moods. Hey. What? Again, that might come back to not being able to use whatever casks they want because their combination of casks has to land exactly at 60%. Uh, whatever the case, it's an issue because you just, you never know what you're gonna get with this whiskey. Now, I don't mind batches being a thing, they're basically inevitable, but it'd be nice if they took notes from somebody like Averlauer and gave us batch numbers or maybe vintages, whatever. As it stands, we do have our like little bottling date that's like stamped on the bottle. You have to squint to see it. Uh, my bottle's from 2021. But now actual batch information would be helpful. Anyway, um, the bottle I've got here is actually my friend's bottle and it's his second bottle of this in a row. And the reason he picked up a second bottle was because we enjoyed the last bottle that he had. You know, it wasn't amazing, but it was good. Uh, oppositely, neither of us are really liking this one. Um, he thinks it's fine. I'm not really a fan of it. Um, I think it's flawed, I think it's young, and it's got a set of flavors that I'm not really enjoying. That metallic burnt nuttiness doesn't really work for me, it kind of throws me off, so does the moldy note. Uh, it's most prevalent in the nose. It's still there on the palate, although water does help with that. Uh, in fact, this is a whiskey that really does need water. I don't think it works very well without it. It's definitely got some heat to it. It's a hot whiskey. It's got some youth in there. Um, it's very aggressive. It's very assertive. So again, water's very much your friend here. Overall, this whiskey is loud. It's inconsistent. It's uncivilized. Uh, but hey, it, it's not boring. And listen, it isn't all bad. The finish is actually quite nice. You know, you give it some water, you let it sit out for a few minutes, and we have some classic Glen Farkless sherry notes in here. Um, you know, I love the fruits. I love the coffee, uh, give it enough water and the dryness starts to benefit the whiskey. It's an okay finish. But at the end of the day, this whiskey is too uneven and I don't really connect with the flavors. My score for this bottle is going to be 81. And before a bunch of you start jumping on me in the comments section, uh, be aware that the last bottle I had, I would have scored probably an 84, maybe 85 on a good day. It wasn't a great whiskey, but it wasn't bad and it was certainly better than this. So I think the big takeaway here is just beware of batches. You know, the batches that are not indicated and you have no way of identifying. Beware of those. And I know some of you guys really do love this stuff, but full disclosure, this has never been a favorite of mine. Even like early on in my whiskey journey when we used to buy a lot of it, we bought it because it was cheap, it was a one liter bottle, it was cast strength, and my friend actually did like it more than I did. Uh, I thought it was fine. Even back in the day, it was fine. For me, the winner and the best affordable Glen Farkless that you can buy will always be the 15. That one with its age and even its lower ABV, I think displays what the distillery does best. But if you insist on a cast strength and you're looking for a sherry bomb, yeah, there you go. So after spending the last five minutes shitting all over this whiskey, I'm here to tell you that this is fantastic value. Um, if you like this whiskey, and I know a lot of you do, you're not going to find much that can compete with this one when it comes to bang for buck. Uh, great value here. You know, it's, it's cheap as chips, uh, big sherry, high ABV, one liter bottle. Can't argue with that. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. 
and I'm sure this one will have a few of you riled up. Um, tell me what you think about Glenfarkas 105 down in the comments. Is it good value? Is it a great sherry bomb? How does it compare to the Abana? Let me know. Uh, and finally, down in the comments, you can also let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.